joining us to look at the Christmas miracle is my very good friend and my pastor, Rob Pacienza. Rob is the lead pastor at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, the church founded by Dr. D. James Kennedy here in Fort Lauderdale. Rob, it's great to have you with us today. Always good to be here, Frank. Great to see you. Why is the virgin birth a necessity for the ministry that Christ wrought here on earth? Well, I think the first thing we have to understand is to deny the virgin birth is to deny Scripture. Right. Um, it is explicitly taught in the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 1, it's taught again in Luke chapter 2. Uh, but Matthew goes as far back as saying this is something that was prophesied about 700 years before the birth of Christ mm. in the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 7, for instance, uh, Isaiah talks about uh, this son that would come and his name would be Emmanuel. Uh, Isaiah 9, two chapters later, and then this son, his name would be the Prince of Peace, mm. even going as far as calling him the Mighty God. Right. So to go against the verge of birth is just to flat out go against Scripture altogether, which leaves us in a major dilemma. I would be interested in your thoughts on this. I seldom hear people, if you ask what's important, the most important miracle or what's the greatest miracle ever done, I mean, it's heads and shoulders, the Incarnation, the transcendent God who created all that there is but was nowhere ever part of His, of his creation decided I'm going to become part of that creation to accomplish an awesome end. Is that not the greatest miracle, the idea that God would become part of his own creation? Absolutely. And Paul speaks in Romans 3 of God being both the just God and the God who justifies. God cannot turn a blind eye towards sin. He needs to always remain just or he ceases to be God. But the same God who must be just and must not let sin go unpunished must also be the God of love, the Bible tells us, the one who justifies. But the only way that God can both be just and the justifying God is if he sends his son, Jesus Christ, to be the one who takes the punishment and takes the wrath and takes his judgment on our behalf so that God can be both just and the justifying God both at the same time. It's the miracle of the cross, and in fact, it's the miracle of Christianity. It is what sets Christianity apart from any other religion and any other philosophy this world has ever seen, that God broke forth into the world in the person of Jesus Christ, becoming both fully God and fully man at the same time to do for sinners what they could never do for themselves. Your friend and mentor and mine, Dr. D. James Kennedy, once said that all objections ultimately come down to an objection to the Bible. When you hear people object to the Bible, what do you have to say to them about the reliability of the Scriptures? Because in the end, the majority of our witness for Christ is a biblical witness, and so our confidence in the Scriptures is paramount. What do you say when people challenge uh, the veracity of the Scriptures? Well, I first have to ask a fair question. How much research have you done? <laughs> How much have you really right. studied the scriptures right. to be able to emphatically dismiss it? Right. It's the person that says God does not exist. Have you, have you searched every galaxy? Have you searched the high heavens and, and can it, so that you can emphatically make the claim that God does not exist? I say the same for the scriptures. Yeah. This is the book that has stood the test of time, the book that has been read uh, more than any other book, the, the the, the book that has been purchased and published more than any book in the course of human history. This is uh, dozens of authors over thousands of years all saying the same thing in context. When you read the book from Genesis to Revelation, uh, the way it complements one another, the way it fulfills the prophecy of prophecy that was written and proclaimed to the people of God hundreds of years before and coming to fruition hundreds of years later, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, you can look at the book and you can say this is a trustworthy book, uh, a book that has stood the test of time, a book that is true and trustworthy, not be just because we say, say it is, right. but because it speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. 